I don't think anyone's missing. Tyler, do you, there's a uh, nope. pending sign on the Parker oh, building. Here we go. All right, we'll call together uh, to order the uh, EDA meeting here uh, Thursday, April 4th, 2024 at uh, uh, Council Chambers. Would you please call the roll? Bevins. Here. Beezer. Here. Grisula. Here. Johnson. Here. Kirsch. Here. O'Day. Here. Sandy. Jaeger. Uh, here, yes. All right. Uh, we'll, uh, looking for an approval of the agenda. So we'll, uh, we have a motion to approve the agenda. Is there and a second? Any discussion? I just was wondering if we could add an item to um, discuss the 210 project and expansion and just talk about next steps for kind of marketing or just other um, kind of... Are you hoping to add that at this at this meeting? I, if we can just touch on it today, and I don't know if it's setting up a separate meeting to discuss it further, but... Okay. I'd like to have staff the ability to weigh in on whether they'd like to see this added now or prepare for this meet, you know, prepare for this discussion in a future meeting. We could have some potential brief um, discussions on to see maybe what you'd like to see on a next meeting. Um, certainly could be helpful to have our city engineer available as well to kind of dis discuss details of the, ex you know, Washington expansion. But uh, I think a brief discussion we could certainly have. Today? Yep. James? Okay. Is that okay? Yeah. All right. Perfect. Great. I'll put that as uh, item 5D under, uh, I guess, unfinished business. We'll call it a 210 update. Any other uh, changes or uh, additions to the agenda? All right, we already had a motion and a second on the agenda, so with that addition, um, I'm gonna go ahead and ask for a uh, voice vote here, please. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign, very good. Item number four is a consent calendar. Uh, all matters listed are considered routine by the board and will be enacted upon one motion. There's no separate uh, discussion on these items, unless good cause is shown prior to the time the board votes on the motion to be adopted by roll call. This includes item uh, 4A, approval of the minutes, financial report, Swanson has camp report, DDBC report, and visit Brainerd report. Uh, can we please call the roll on this, please? Bevins? Yes. Beezer? Yes. Grisula? Yes. Johnson? Yes. Kirsch? Yes. O'Day? Yep. Sandy? Jaeger? Yes. All right. Consent calendar is approved. And we'll move on to five. The, uh, 5A. This is the uh, first item of unfinished business. This is the approval of the brokerage signs. James, I'm assuming you're going to kind of give us a little heads up on this. Yep. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, so staff has provided copies of the brokerage signs that were presented at the last meeting and are asking the board to approve final signage design from Camp Real Estate and Development and authorize staff to spend up to $1,000 in printing costs. Uh, this would be for uh, the two by three signs that uh, would be uh, at the individual properties probably like a choroplast uh, type thing that would go in there and then the four by six would be um, the signs that would go kind of on the um, thoroughfares at the end of the developments for the the right street extension as well as the industrial park and that'd probably be something a little bit more expensive a little larger um, probably maybe like a die bond or I'd certainly work with a printing company to to get the best type of material for that I can answer any questions and I believe uh, uh, Jennifer Haskamp is also online to answer any questions all right, very good, thank you. Anybody have any questions for uh, Mr. Kramvik? One. Yes, please. Isn't it industry standard that the real estate agent prints the signs? Um, you can certainly ask Jennifer that. I'm not sure how that works with the scope of services that we did. Um, when we when we put together the framework, I know we had talked about staff printing them, um, but now we do have a brokerage contract, so I was proceeding kind of what we had in the framework earlier, but uh, Jennifer could you know, certainly ask that and, and see if that's an option. Uh, Jennifer, do we have you online? Oh, maybe she can. Excuse me? Jennifer? Jennifer? There we go. I can, we can see you at least. We just can't hear you. Oh, we're like hearing some murmuring. It's like she's underwater. She's in the pool. If you could just write out your responses on paper and hold them up to the screen. It was a yes or no question. It shouldn't be hard. <laughs> uh, okay, so we'll, yeah, we'll try this as a yes or no. Well, I don't think we can do that. It has to be has to be vocalized. I think I got in trouble for this once before. We'll, we'll give this one more try. 
And Mr. Chair, if we don't get this figured out, it's just something to look into. Yes. Perhaps we don't need to spend EDA money, but if we if we must, okay, then I, I would support it. Uh, maybe uh, respond to the inquiry, send it back to James. James can give us a uh, email update on what the uh, what the outcome is later. Uh, we got murmuring. That's all we got. It's like you're under. It is really like she's underwater. Yep. Yep. It. yep. It is, it's an underwater meeting. We're going to move on here. Uh, but uh, hopefully, James, if you can just follow up with that. And, Sounds and good. Yep. Here. Um, should we make up with that as a motion? Um, yeah, I'd move to approve. Okay. Oh, I thought you were asking for a motion on the. Uh, yeah, we got a motion to approve in a second. Any uh, discussion? All right, hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Very good. We got an approval of our uh, brokerage signs. No matter who pays for them, I guess. We'll move on to uh, item B. This is the approval of the amendment uh, to the brokerage contract uh, with Camp Real Estate uh, to add the uh, annex. Uh, Mr. Kramvik, please. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, so this is an addendum to the brokerage agreement with Camp Real Estate and Development and allows the annex building to be listed for sale. Uh, staff would like Jennifer to discuss, well, um, if she's able to, it may not be possible, what <laughs> options are available to advertise um, as a lease as well. And maybe I just have her um, send an email um, directing uh, what the options are for that. Uh, but with that, staff recommends the agreement on the addendum um, to begin listing it uh, within that uh, agreement. She'd be looking at uh, getting it appraised to see what the cost would be for that. I know we have had a couple interested parties over the last six months in actually purchasing it. Um, so this would be kind of the first step. And then maybe at a later date, we'd look at uh, potential leasing options as well um, for listing. So with that, I can certainly answer any questions. Very good. Thank you, Mr. Kramvik. Anybody have any thoughts have on? Questions. Yes, please, Mr. I, Bevins. I, I don't recall, and maybe, maybe Gabe or Mike can help me. I, Pretty sure the council hasn't approved selling that building, and so if all of a sudden it shows up on a listing site, maybe I think we're putting the cart before the horse. I think the council should clarify, if not reaffirm, that they want to sell that. Because last we had a we had a tenant going in there that declined at the twelfth hour. I think that would yeah that would be the best route. Oh, yeah. we get we get to kick something to the council for once instead of them. Yeah, that's great. I love this. Well, well so yeah, please. So I think it was it was already. Maybe before I was even on the council, but it, it was almost, was it agreed on that it was was to be put up for lease or something? So if, if could it be for sale or lease? <clears throat> well, my question is going to be. clarify that with the council. Because sure. I, yes, we did have a lease agreement that was approved. So maybe we send that question to the council, whether it's for sale or for lease or for sale or lease. Right. That'd be good because it's been my understanding it's been for sale for several years so right. the council must have at some point had this conversation to, so otherwise yeah we almost sold it to region five right I well, and there was money set aside they were going to lease it right that's what i thought yeah. well, let's kick it to the council see what let's the council do it knows. i think right. there was money set aside by the council also to, to make some improvements on it we i don't, don't have anybody standing with a bucket of cash do we not at you this time. They, 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 they've toured it and had... In winning the lottery. Well, did the lottery go off last <laughs> night? <laughs> no, it did not. Did not go off last night? Then let's say we kick it back to the council. Yeah, we've got none. <laughs> so none of us won. No. So we still own the annex. Uh, do we need a motion on this? Or we'll just kick it back? Yeah, possibly a motion. Um, you could recommend um, approval of the brokerage agreement, and then you know, it'd be, it'd be oh. similar to planning commission, where it'd be then final decision by the, the city council. That's what I was going to say. So we could do this in one uh, one movement here, if we could say we recommend it, and so then moved. pending the... Uh, second. Okay, um, we have a motion, a second. Any discussion? Question. Yes, please. Is that moving forward to have it for sale or lease? Yes. All right. With the approval of the council. Yep. Who was, and you are a seconder. And, you, and it's also is that what you, the way you understood it? Okay. The addition to the sales agreement. Okay. Okay. Original motion and second. Agree to the uh, discussion item. Any other discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. All right. Motion carries. Uh, we will move on to item uh, 5C. This is the consideration of the proposal from Bladeck to administer grants uh, and our revolving loan fund. Are we, are James, is this year? Are we going... Skip, skipping right over to Blade Deck. I'll start with this one. Please. Thank you, Mr. President. So at the February 8th EDA meeting, the board directed staff to work with Blade Deck on the parameters for a potential grant and revolving loan program for facade and exterior improvements for downtown, uh, as well as properties that uh, 
are along the corridors of Brainerd. After discussion with Bladeck and the finance department, staff prepared a summary document for the Exterior Improvement Grant Program. Uh, this program was modeled after a similar program from St. Cloud, uh, which would uh, provide 50% matching grants for actual construction costs up to $5,000 per property on a pay for performance basis. Uh, staff proposes that the EDA allocate up to $20,000 per calendar year to eligible project projects within the River to Rail Economic Incentive District or businesses adjacent to Washington Street, Mill Avenue, or Business 371. Uh, funds may be used for the design or construction of permanent exterior building improvements, awning, signage, windows, doors, uh, brick repair, and site landscaping resulting in a publicly visible improvement. Uh, to speed up the project, staff is recommending that eligible projects would be authorized by the EDA president and executive director of the EDA, uh, but so certainly could be brought to the EDA if that's something that the EDA wishes um, to, to vote on each time. Uh, Bladeck uh, would administer the grant at, at a rate of $85 per hour, which was in their proposal. Um, so I'll let Blada uh, discuss the vari variables for a potential revolving loan fund. Um, staff believes this should be worked on over the course of the year based on the number of variables that are still present with that, um, along with uh, the HRA is going to be uh, applying for an improvement grant along Washington Street uh, and, and is also leveraging the local income dollars for that, which is one of the largest pots to take money out of. So I think there's still a lot of variables for this part of it that we could work on over the year and potentially a workshop during the summer. Um, so I'll let uh, Tyler take over on what those variables may be, and you can ask him any questions about uh, potentially a um, partnership with Blade Act to administer the grant. Uh, thank you, James. Tyler, please. Yeah, good morning, everyone. Um, yeah, as James and I and Allison met in, uh, I think it was the middle of February, just to t kind of talk through all of this process, uh, we are well equipped to you know to administer a grant. Certainly, we have you know a lot of experience with this with the. Uh, work that we did with the county, but also with the Main Street Revitalization Grant, will, which will continue through two more years, I believe, uh, just the, the management of that or the administration of that. Um, I think the grant side of this, which James laid out, is pretty straightforward. Um, uh, you know, certainly like the idea of the match, the 50% matching grant. I think that's important that the the business owner has some skin in the game when it comes to grant dollars. Um, as we've talked about in the past, that we don't get those grant dollars back. So when they go out, they're gone. Um, so that's the, the certainly the the incentive for the business owner to uh, access some of these dollars is to have some skin in the game. So I like uh, certainly like that idea. We just had some conversations around where the dollars would come from from your bucket, but that's Connie and and James and and now uh, Nick's responsibilities to see where that comes from. Uh, regarding the revolving loan funds, I think we just had more. We had more questions than anything regarding how you as an EDA would like to see that work because loan dollars and setting up a, a loan program does involve a little bit more, a little bit, it involves quite a bit more effort just because how are we going to look at this? Are you guys, do you want us, you know, pulling credit reports? Do you want us going down the pathway of really making determinations on who is, who's eligible to borrow the money? What are terms? What are rates? Um, you know, so there's there the variables that are involved with loan dollars are are different, but it's not something that can't be overcome. It's just a matter of where this board would like to go with loan dollars. Um, the other side of the loan dollars is is that what happens if they aren't able to make their payments? What happens if we have to, for some reason, try and track these dollars down? Or are we gonna is this board gonna be okay with just accepting the fact that a loan went bad? So those are the, the the challenges I think that come with a revolving loan fund. We are more than willing to work with staff on on setting this up through your guys's recommendation and taking that forward. Uh, again, happy to do that. Um, from our side of it, you know, from the work that we'd be able to do with this, um, as was in our um, proposal to you, um, administering the the fund itself, creating the application, marketing the fund, uh, marketing the grant. Fielding any questions that uh, that would come up through this process, review the applications, and then handing the applications over to a board or individuals that you designate, or as it's indicated in here, is the the EDA chair um, to make the determinations on on those grant dollars. So I'm happy to answer any questions. Um, you, know, you guys have experience with us doing this already. Uh, we've we're like I said we're 
we're equipped, we can turn this on as quickly as you would ask us to do that. Um, we would just create a, uh, an application, um, get the, the site ready to, to accept applications, but we would obviously run that through you guys prior to making this go live. Very good. Thank you, Tyler. Do we have mm -hmm. any questions for James or Tyler? Please. Oh, um, question uh, regarding the fee is that's on a TNM basis. How many hours do you think it'll take to run this program? Uh, with these kind of dollars in there, I can't imagine that. I mean, I would be. I don't know. I'd have to. It, it depends on the amount of applications that come in because that's that's what's just going to determine the. The amount of time that it takes to kind of process through these, but the, the the grant side of it should be pretty straightforward. I can't imagine there'd be a ton of time involved in that. Um, I mean, if I said it's going to be less than fifty hours, I would think that's pretty accurate. That's just I'm just pulling a number out of as I'm thinking about the Main Street stuff as the amount of stuff we went through. Some of it depends on the questions, the follow up that we need to do with people asking you know very specific questions, but the grant side should be pretty straightforward. I'm just giving a number, Tony. I don't no, really I know for certain. Um, my only concern is just because we are on a, a budget, so mm -hmm. I want to make sure that we stay within some guidelines. So I don't know if we should have a TNM not to exceed number, just so we have like a buffer zone, so we know. Well, you know, it's per okay. perfectly reasonable. Absolutely, and we could we could definitely work with whatever you guys decide. Okay, that was my only concern mm -hmm. with our budget that we have. And then um, I saw language in here about expanding and that it would just be the rivers to rail with the modified rivers to rail. Yep. And James addressed that. That was my only question is, is whether, and I know we talked about that a little bit is it, whether we expand this out outside of what the defined corridor of the river to rail is. And that was, I think the addition to the Washington street and some things on sixth street as well. I would defer to James on that. Yeah, so also proposing um, to go beyond the river trails along Washington Street, so any property that's adjacent to Washington Street could potentially uh, make use of this grant, as well as South 6th Street and then Mill Avenue as well. Um, hitting kind of some of the other cor major corridors that we have coming into town to improve the facades and, and look of Brainerd. So would it be just within the modified river to rails or anyone that's close? So there's the river to rails would be included into it. And then, um, you know, it, it, there wouldn't be a map. It's just if your property is adjacent to South 6th Street coming into town, you would also be eligible. Okay. So that wouldn't modify the river to rails. It would just be part of this, um, part of this grant program. Okay. Because when I was reading it, it said that it was the river to rail. So I just wanted to clarify that it's outside of that. And I think the language, um, Tony, could be very specific in the application to, and, and we could, I'm sure we could create a map in some capacity that would, we've done that in the past where we, we place the mapping on the, on the application or when someone goes in to, to review the area where they're, they're eligible, there's an actual map inside there so they can see if their property falls within that boundary. Okay. Thank you. Other questions? Yeah. Please. Um, so with regards to the kind of the eligible area, I guess I just wanted to bring up for discussion of like, what is our goal with this? Are we trying to like have kind of a visible improvement in like a concentrated area or are we more just wanting to put these funds out there? Um, just given the, the broader kind of the area is, is you're not going to see as much of an impact in a concentrated space. So I guess I don't have a feeling one way or the other, but I just wanted to raise that is, yeah, the broader, I guess the broader the area you're doing, if one improvement project is here and another one's, you know, a mile away, is that going to be as visible? Do we want to just concentrate it, for example, like in the, just the Washington corridor, um, just to have kind of, again, more of a visible improvement area? Um, my other question was, is and this again is just in regards to the to the exterior grant. Um, the language was like it's up to four projects with a max of five thousand. Would we be open to doing more projects at a smaller dollar amount, or is that set for a reason to kind of lower administrative time needed? Because obviously, the more applicants you have the more time it's gonna to take to administer them. But I guess I personally would like to see maybe smaller projects at a smaller dollar amount. Um, 
given like, for example, for me, for as a small business owner, I wouldn't really see myself maybe having $5,000 to go towards the matching for that, but I can maybe do, you know, like $800 worth of improvements. And so could we, is there any wiggle room in there to have, yeah, to, to lower the, you know, the, to, to basically have more smaller projects rather than four, because the, the way this is budgeted, we would basically be seeing four projects for this period. And, and we could clarify that language. The thought was the $20,000 would be the max. Um, you know, so if it was um, $5,000 for the projects, it, you know, that four projects would be, you know, what would be used. But I, I think certainly um, there could be smaller projects funded as well. Um, $20,000 is really the, the max, not the four projects. Um, so that was the thought process behind it. And certainly we could work out the language to make that a little bit more clear. Um, and then the other part of it, uh, uh, something I guess for the EDA to consider where they want um, to see the facade improvements most, it could be along all of Washington Street. I know um, some of the things that we heard from the BER and the interviews from Bladeck is that um, businesses outside of the River Trails District was hoping to you know, also capitalize on some of the um, incentives from Brainerd as well. So that was kind of the thought process of opening it up to additional corridors. I know it's been you know, important with the comprehensive plan as well. Um, not just focusing on Washington Street, but all of our corridors. So that was kind of the thought process behind that as well. Um, but certainly a discussion topic for the EDA. And I can add to that too, Marie, when our conversations as we were getting into this were um, primarily around the feedback that we received, we have been receiving over the last few years around where the improvements are being done, but also that these dollars weren't just, these are, these are tax dollars. So to not to just focus on a specific area to, to look at some of the improvements that need to be made. And yeah, it is the cost up to $5,000 per property. So that was the, the reason that the four came into there is that if we had four projects that came and said, we each, each one of them wants $5,000 to make these improvements. But as James mentioned, I mean, and we're it, fully capable of this as well as if we had, you know, if we had 20 projects come in at $1,000 a piece, we can manage that. It's it's just up to 5,000 would be the the highest amount that the grant would allow. I just had more questions unless anybody wants to jump in. Um, in, in terms of the application process, this is just gonna be like an open application and then we have an end date and then it's kind of like a committee is just gonna review them and approve them or is it just like first come, first serve and whoever? <laughs> applies first, it's just approved on a rolling basis until the funds are used up, or how is that gonna work? So yeah, a couple options there. We could do a committee type approval to, to rate the projects. Um, I did put in here that it would be potentially authorized by the president of the EDA as well as the executive director of the EDA, um, but it certainly could be made up of a committee. I think there would be benefit of not having to bring it back to the EDA for approval um, just because we're only meeting every um, two months. So it, that, would, that would certainly slow the, the process down, um, but would be open to, to hearing what the, the EDA uh, may recommend on that. Could we do something similar to the other revitalization grants where we just had like a subcommittee that reviewed? That? that was going to be one of my questions is how to do this. First come, first serve makes it easy. It removes us from it. But if we want to score these and do it every once a year, we could ask a subcommittee to do that. Anybody have any thoughts on that portion of this? If we're it should be first come, first served. I agree. I think... Uh, increasingly, if we go to a subcommittee, it's increasingly more uncomfortable as, as this body sits in here for no reason. The, the subcommittee thing was, was, was made for the deed projects, and I think we could just fall into that slippery slope of having a secret meeting about what we're going to approve or what we're not going to approve every single time. <clears throat> I think we either administratively do it or do it in this body right here. So if, whether it's annually or every time we meet, right. I guess I don't know, but I'm comfortable doing it administratively Me if, too. as long as it's in the right spot. If they're eligible. Mm -hmm. That's they're eligible. generally my thinking. Anybody else? If, yeah, please. Um, I agree with the first come, first serve. We just have to have language in there if we get like four applicants or 10 applicants all stamped with the same mail date or drop off date, how we 
figure out the first come first serve on that. So they're tagged in our system. So they're time stamped as they hit, as the application hits our system, it's oh, time stamped. Perfect. So we would have a, a very detailed um, identifier to when they hit um, our system so that the first come first serve certainly would work. And to address, I think something that you mentioned at the last meeting, Tony, was the timeliness of this. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, as you guys discuss whether or not you go to a committee or if it is just administratively, we, we will not administratively make any decisions. That's up to you guys and the staff, but, um, for expediency or to get these things moving, um, as quickly as I know that was addressed at the last meeting, you know, a committee, as much trouble as we had getting everybody at the table during the Main Street stuff, that takes a lot of time. That's my only concern. Yes, please. Um, going back to the uh, hourly rate and Blade Act, having done this in the past, was that the way we did it before when you guys have been taking care of this kind of thing? <laughs> The Main Street Revitalization Grants, uh, we received a grant from the Initiative Foundation to process those. Um, so they they paid us to, and I think we're at about $1.50 an hour, the amount of time we've got into that for what we received there, but that's, o that's okay. We do a lot of things with the Initiative Foundation, but um, yeah, we, with the, with the county, the, the rate that we um, provided for them was quite a bit higher than this just because they were asked us to do go above and beyond what we were looking normally to do okay so a dollar fifty an hour is standard right now yeah <laughs> is, is uh with the county was uh eighty five dollars an hour was that right around what, what you guys had with the county it was contracted it, it was higher than that okay yeah okay and the other question have we ever had anybody fail on a loan and what did we do if that happened so the only experience that I have with that, and Gabe can speak to this as well, um, having served on our unified fund where some of the dollars came in from the city of Brainerd, we have not had a loan go bad on that, and we're seven years into that at this point. But I, I think I would refer to staff as to how you'd want to handle that if we get to the loan side of it and someone, if someone does default, I would defer to staff to address that because... The loan side of it, especially for us, is, is that we're going to process the applications. We're going to make recommendations to staff. They'll make it, and you, you'll make recommendations to who to approve if they do go down the loan side of this. Um, and then payments, everything would come back to the city. The city would be cutting the checks on all of these. It's not coming out of us. So, I mean, I'm sure we could work protocols into place if something was to go bad and what a workout plan looks like, but I don't think we're there yet. So in, in business, when people don't pay their bills, we just we turn them into a collection agency. Is that something that we could do with this? I mean, it seems simple to me, but maybe I'm missing it. I'm not a loan officer, so. Yeah, I guess you've got one sitting next to you. So I guess that would be the process is to go down that pathway. Um, you know, you certainly hope that there's you'd take some steps because this is these are tax dollars. You'd take some steps to mitigate that uh, that effort, but I don't know. Certainly, we'd have to we'd have to put some language into place if there were a, if there was had to be a loan workout. Okay, that's all. Yep. Anybody else? Yes, please. Yeah, I, I uh, think we absolutely have to have a cost not to exceed. I just hate to spend fifteen thousand dollars administratively administering twenty thousand dollars in grants, right? So if we yep. can make it not exceed four or five thousand dollars, <laughs> I think we should approve it administratively. I think. <clears throat> I'm fine with what was proposed with like the river rail and other corridors, but I think it should also, I think it should be open to any commercial or industrial business in the city of Brainerd. They're all, they're all taxpayers. I think it should be a forgivable loan. So if they fix up their business and then as a flip and then sell it, we get that money back. We do that with the small cities grants. I don't know how we would do that through an EDA yeah, lease, forgivable loan, John. So the small Probably. cities grants on commercial rehab, there's a repayment agreement. Um, the, the grant or loan is given to uh, the building owner, not the business owner. So I don't know if, if you guys are giving this to business owners, that would look a little different. That was my we question. We record a repayment agreement and it just drops off a percentage every year. And there, it's a two page, two, three page document that if you're in business and 
dollar requirements, 10% percent for given this year, 10% second year, to where it just drops off. That's on a grant. But that is tied to the, the building owner itself, so you just record it, and it stays on as a mortgage, essentially. So I like that payment. when we're dealing with business, or building owners, when we're dealing with business owners, I don't know how we would have, have teeth or anything. My, my thinking is, is it's, it's like anything else. You make an improvement. If you leave, it's on you. It stays with the building. So I, I think there may be some gray area where it'd be where, where we'd be in not a good place. But generally speaking, the improvements would stay with the building regardless. So. And I would say that that's only if you go it, when you go down the loan path. The grant path is business owner or building owner, whichever. The grant side of it is is much easier. But the loan side of it, I think. We could definitely figure out how to put some between all of us. We could put some language in there that that goes down the path of what Gabe's talking about, and John has experience with that. And I'm but the goal sure of this is him. to get the improvements done. So mm -hmm. even if we don't get repaid or somebody walks, if the improvements there, it's on the building and right. success. Yep, that was my thinking. Yeah. Any other questions? Just to clarify, and this board is good with the two year. Anybody have any objections with the two year? Or discussion. One. So um, the forgiveness is if you're there two years. If you leave before then, then that's when you have to pay it back. I could see it going either two years or five years. I don't. It doesn't make much difference to me. I guess. I would have done five, but when we're talking hundreds of dollars, it, it, yeah. I mean, the entire world operates on a system of getting paid back money that's owed to them. Somebody's going to, you guys can figure out how to get us paid back if somebody tips over on this. Not the entire yeah. world. Close the to the federal end. government does not. <laughs> that's work true. That way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, commercials that the IRS is. <laughs> We're good with the two years, guys? All right, very good. I just have one. Uh, anybody else? All right, I just have one thing to add. I would like to see the design portion removed from the application, uh, just because it's a fairly small amount, and my worst case scenario for this, personally, is you fork over 10 grand to somebody, they blow it all on a designer, and then the project never gets built. So uh, when we mention skin in the game, uh, I think the, the, the tenant or the landowner should put in that money on the design side first. So I'd like to see this for actual brick and mortar projects, not design, but that's my only thought. How about maybe like a before and after picture? I mean, just to keep it simple. I mean, there, like a percentage complete, a little a bit of proof complete. that proof we'll of put it on our blog then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Anything else? Uh, yes, please, James. Yeah, so I think we have kind of a general consensus and and what uh, the EDA is looking for here. I think next steps, in my opinion, would be to um, uh, Bladeck would be preparing their contract with the EDA to get that signed, um, get some of the applications, what that would look like to get those approved. Um, so that would probably be at the next meeting. Um, would be uh, I guess staff's recommendation on that part of it, and then the revolving loan fund. Um, you know, again, I think that a lot of stuff needs to be worked out with that still, and, and that would maybe be determined at a future workshop. Everyone go with that? All right, very good. No need any motions here or anything? We're good? I think we're good. All right, we're going to move on to item uh, 5D. This is a 210 update, so just a basic conversation here. James, just kind of get us up to speed, and then if we have uh, want this to carry over into uh, next meeting with a little bit more formal, in-depth update. I see we do have our engineer here, but don't want to throw him uh, into the fray here unprepared either. So, uh, James, please. Yeah, um, you know, I will, I'll maybe have Jesse talk about that. I know um, I do have this in my staff report. Uh, the EDA website uh, is live. We had a few hiccups with it. Um, it did go live today here. Um, so there is going to be uh, an actual section talking about the Washington 210 project, um, as well as what some of the opportunities may be there for the grants. Um, I know the HRA is working on something as well. So we do want to call that project out and what some of those opportunities are going to be. I know at future meetings, uh, we're potentially going to be looking looking at uh, the commercial corridor district and, and the potential for mixed use development in there. So there's a lot of stuff happening that uh, um, I guess staff is recommending to, um, to help improve Washington. Uh, I'll let Jesse take over and talk about the actual project itself and then um, you guys can answer or ask any questions that you may have of staff. Uh, thank you, Mr. Kramvik. Welcome, Jesse. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, so the project itself is still in the really early stages of design. Um, they've kind of started identifying the, the limits of the right of way that they want to do. Uh, they're trying to finalize that and have more discussions with the property owners. So if you have property on Washington, 
they've probably already reached out to you and started engaging with those discussions. Uh, we've also had discussions with uh, a lot of our different partners and agencies like our fire department, our police department, uh, the city of Baxter, and uh, looking at um, potential detour routes, what routes we could use, uh, starting to frame that conversation. We've also had a conversation uh, a few weeks ago with the chamber, did a presentation between us and MnDOT uh, to the chamber, uh, talking about the project and what we're trying to do with it, with obviously improvements, uh, aesthetic improvements, utility improvements, um, but as well as the impacts through construction, uh, making sure that we address people's needs. Um, one thing that MnDOT is required to do is if you have access to Washington, um, and that's your only access, they have to provide you access even during construction um, because they can't just force you to shut your doors during construction, especially for a, an extended period. We're still looking at a two-year project, 26 and 27. Uh, so we'll continue the process all the way through 2024 with design, uh, probably into the early months of 2025. From there, it'll go in through a handful of different reviews with the state. Uh, we'll probably have fall 2025 where the project will be bid. Uh, there's probably going to be some different phasing, so you're not going to see the entire corridor all down all at once for two full years. It'll probably be bits and pieces of it as you kind of work through. Um, so, for example, maybe 2026, we're more focused on the west half, everything up to 6th Street, and then 2027, everything east of 6th Street. I don't know if that'll be the way it all shakes out, but um, something along those lines so it's not completely destroying everybody's access to getting in and around the area. So half destroying it for two years. <laughs> that, that, that's part of the discussion, too, is if you could do it in one year, and that constructability is one part of that, but uh, what would that do? And you almost have to completely close the entire corridor for the full year. And obviously, uh, like we talked about, um, people that have access and their only access to Washington, that puts them in a really big bind. So um, different things that we've been talking about with the, the two different staffs and making sure that we're making sure that especially all the businesses on Washington are, are accounted for too. Thank you. Yeah, I just brought this up because I attended that MnDOT meeting and some of the feedback I heard from business owners there was um, part of the construction is going to be like removing their signage or making changes to stuff related to their business. And so are we going to have a specific, say, like grant program or some sort of loan program to help um, – those businesses if they're needing to replace signage. Um, so that's one thing I heard at the meeting. And then just, it's not really clear to me who's taking the lead on, um, like when we get to the point, I know it's still two years out, but it's probably still not too early to start thinking ahead of like what sort of, um, I guess, advertising or like what sort of campaign are we doing to ensure people are still able or aware that they can still shop down there um and i just as being part of the main street program i've heard from a lot of different uh, other communities and ideas of how they've addressed this and different ideas for um, unique things to do to again just drive business down there so i guess i'm just wondering like is the eda taking the lead on forming some sort of committee or getting people together whether it's like the chamber DDBC, um, you know, the, the business owners that are impacted on there to kind of come together and figure out a plan for this. Um, again, I know it's two years out, which seems far away, but it's going to be here sooner <laughs> than we think, I think. So um, just trying to figure out wh what steps need to be taken to make sure we're in a good place once 2026 is there and we're prepared for it. Um, just the feedback I got from Matt at the chamber, too, is like, I think he was maybe looking for some direction from the EDA on whether the chamber is going to be leading that or who who is leading that and how that how that's funded and that sort of thing. So, please, if I can comment, Mr. Chair. Um, so, MnDOT has come a long ways in the last handful of years with community engagement and addressing these needs during construction because they're they're understanding more that it's not just come and blow up a street and then get out of there. That that has really real impacts to people that are operating on there. So they do have different staff in the district that can help coordinate those kinds of outreach efforts, especially during construction, uh, making sure that people know where to go and how to get it and different events and stuff like that. But I, MnDOT's priorities are obviously going to be towards the project. They're going to cue to us on what we want to see. If we want to go 
really, really big, they're going to cue us to how much effort do we want to put in. So I'd say it's really on us to give them the direction of how much we want to do or how little we want to do. Um, so I, I, that's where I would look for direction is uh, which group really wants to, to take the reins of it and then start crafting that vision. Uh, and we'll, we'll definitely support it and bring it to MnDOT and coordinate the effort. I guess on behalf of DDBC, I know like, again, I'm part of these Main Street discussions and so it's a great resource to just ask like what other communities have done to kind of pull some ideas together, but I just don't know what like a budget looks like to, to staff that and I think it's gonna be a bigger partnership beyond any just one organization leading it, but I just, yeah, I'm just trying to figure out what the next step is and as much as, yeah, I, I don't wanna have another subcommittee on this or have to have more meetings on it, but I also don't wanna be unprepared <laughs> for when the time comes that we need this in place. So just, yeah, just trying to figure out what the best next step is. I know is. MnDOT's not gonna wanna see a really big project and they're having to f fence all of the fun and the effort into it. If Let's say, let's take an example. The EDA wants to do this this big effort on community outreach, and we're coming forward with a, a significant amount of the funds for it. I think MnDOT would be open to sharing some of the costs. Um, but again, it's they're going to queue up to us for the direction um, and see what's, I guess, acceptable to them. Um, like I said, I don't think they want to put a big effort in and fund 100% of it. I think they want to see a partnership of it. Do they have like recommended plans or, you know, like they just examples of what other similar communities have done to give us kind of a framework to go by? Do they I, have any sort of tho like those sorts of resources or? I'm sure we do. Uh, there is probably, there's a few in district three, but I know all of them in that districts, it's not the first state highway to go through and get a reconstruction done. So uh, there's going to be examples and I know, there's plenty of communities that have done very little. I mean, obviously outside of just signage, hey, this place is over here and this place is over here and pretty minimal and uh, left it at that. And I know there's other communities. Uh, I know when Alexandria was uh, done through their main street, uh, they did a lot of effort there. They did events and a lot of different uh, ways to engage the community. Obviously that takes a lot more effort, a lot more funding. Um, so there's, there's a big scale of, of what it is and uh, we can definitely pull some examples of what that was. Yeah, I guess it would just be nice to have just some recommendations of what, yeah, like, and have kind of a schedule laid out of when do we need to have what figured out by so that we're ready for it. Um, and I just, yeah, I didn't know if any part of that MnDOT project, if there's any budget involved in that. Like, I know at that meeting it was mentioned, like, hiring, like, a liaison or I, I don't know if that's, like, a local liaison or somebody to help with communication because I know that was another big concern of businesses is knowing exactly like what's happening and when so not only they know but they can communicate that to their customers and just being aware of, of that sort of stuff so I don't know where that is in the process either. I think it's back to they're going to look to us of how much do we want them to be involved and how much do we want to put the effort in. Um, I think they would, if we're looking to do a lot of effort with the community outreach, uh, I think they'd be willing to uh, fund that person, fund the liaison to whatever level that we're looking for. Um, again, I don't think they just want to fund uh, whatever if we're not wanting them or pushing them to do so. Uh, Mr. Kramvik, it sounds like staff's being asked to put together just a basic framework of potential players, potential cost, and and then bring that back to us at some point. Does that sound? Yep, that's what it sounds like to me. So, um, yep, we Mr. can put Johnson, that together sorry. for p potentially the next meeting. Um, and uh, Jesse can do some more research on on what MinDOT might do or how they might partner with it. And yeah, look at at some examples of what other communities have done. Mr. Johnson. Thanks. I think included in the recommendation or, or the research is see if you can find an organization or a group that wants to take the lead, not somebody who's willing to be involved, not somebody who will take the lead, but is there, is there a group, is there the chamber that wants to be out in the forefront of this? That would be nice to know. It's maybe when we're talking about particip uh, uh, possible participants, an initial reach out just to say, hey, do you want to be part of this conversation? Meeting's coming up. Yes, please. Maybe, maybe I'm thinking too specifically, but I think we have 
what, what would you say, Jesse, maybe another year before all these plans and this design is completely finalized with all the underground work and the right of ways and everything that That's, would, that would be also be very good to know before we actually start putting a, a campaign out. Um, I think this is something that we might even want to think about a year from now or, or sometime in the summer of 2025 instead of right now. It's good to have the conversation and figure out who wants to be involved. But I think this is something that we're way ahead of the game, even kind of planning right now. So, A basic timeline also, Mr. Krambeck, as a part of this conversation, right? Yep, we'll consider that as well. Good, everyone? All right, very good. Uh, we're going to move on to, uh, thank you, Jesse. Uh, we're going to move on to our uh, new business here. This is the consideration of the expansion of the River to Rails Incentive District. Please, Mr. Krambeck. Yes, thank you, Mr. President. Uh, so the EDA held a workshop on June 28th of 2023 to discuss additional economic incentive programs for the city of Brainerd. Uh, at the workshop, uh, Bladeck provided that report saying, um, again, that some of the interviews uh, would like to maybe potentially expand the River to Rails District to include all of, um, all of the Washington Street or Commercial Corridor District that's similar to what we have um, right now in the River to Rails District. Uh, so further expansion um, of the River to Rails uh, that's depicted in the map would be the full commercial corridor district. Uh, staff did discuss, or community, I as a community development director uh, discussed with the public works director as well as public utilities director, uh, whether this area and the utilities could support um, the potential forgiveness of SAC and WAC and some of the permit fees. Uh, with the new Washington project, they uh, didn't see a, a, a potential issue with that. Um, we're going to be getting new utilities and the upsizing with the Washington Street project would be uh, would coincide perfectly with the expansion of the River to Rails District. And then as I discussed in the, the workshop, um, as well as earlier in today's meeting, um, the Planning Commission is going to be reviewing whether mixed use development could be potentially allowed in the commercial corridor district. Um, right now it's just commercial. Uh, so staff may be proposing that uh, similar to what we have downtown where you have you know stores shops on the first floor you'd have um, residential um, uh, residential units above that uh, that being said those residential units do add up with sack and whack it's uh, three thousand three hundred dollars per unit uh, so that's where I really did want to get the, the public utilities director and public works director involved in the conversation uh, as we met a couple weeks ago to see if that would be an issue and they did not see an issue with that um, so with that Lori if you could pull up the the map so here would be the expansion, um, the area is in blue right here, currently um, it goes and kind of stops at 13th uh, Street uh, Southeast there. Uh, this would be expansion of the rest of um, the commercial corridor district, beyond that is kind of more of the, the Cub Food area which would be our general commercial area. And then similar to the, the other side of the river there on the west side, that's more general commercial. Um, so it would be expansion of the full commercial corridor district, um, as well as kind of a cleanup on the right side there. Um, the map actually ended in the middle of the road where it doesn't in a lot of the other areas. Um, so this would be in, uh, including, I guess, just the other side of, of 19th Street, which uh, in staff's recommendation would make sense for that for that neighborhood there. Um, so with that, I can uh, certainly answer any questions. Uh, staff does recommend approval of the revised River Trail economic incentive policy. And I did put a note on here, this would have to be approved by um, City Council uh, after this meeting. Thank you, James. Any questions for James? Yes, please. Yeah, can you just speak to the reasoning of leaving out the general commercial district? Like, why wouldn't we include West Brainerd or all the way past the mall? Um, certainly could. I think there's been more development in that area that uh, maybe doesn't need some of the incentive policies of the River to Rails district. Um, but, you know, if the EDA would like to add that area, we certainly could as well. I would like to include it just because that's um, an area that we can expand on for more businesses. Um, and it's a great location right there. Um, so do you picture that it would end then at Mill Avenue? Is that kind of the thoughts on that? Or, you know, on the other side, I guess we have the church uh, on Mill Avenue. So Mill Avenue may be, um, then would it also be south of 210? Um, there's some general commercial that's kind of south of 210. You have Shannon's Auto Body now and a few properties there. I guess I'd like to get... EDA's thoughts on, on that. We already got their permit fees. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I'm less concerned with the mall, because that's really only one big property heading east, but west, I think there's a lot of small businesses that could benefit <coughs> from this. We know Tanner is moving up onto 371 in Baxter in the next number of years, so that's a huge redevelopment opportunity on that lot on Washington. 
I, I would like to see us expand it west. On the west side, okay. I'd like South 6th to be included on this as well. Um, I drive it every day. There's, there's a lot of um, commercial zones on South 6th that have been touched very little in the last 10 years or so, ever since everything moved west. Um, but I think it's, it's one of those welcome to Brainerd corridors where you're driving on South 6th Street and it could certainly be improved. And I think this is one of the ways we could help do that. It might be easier just to decide what we don't want in the uh, new corridor. Right. Why limit it? I'm, we're getting there, basically. I mean, at this point. Mill Avenue as well, Oak Street as well, hmm? um, 28th, where we're looking at building a trail. There's plenty of places we could improve. Are we going to rename it also? That's my biggest concern. Are we going to, who's, what's the new name? Please. That's what, that was going to be my consideration. Um, this, this kind of still uh, fits in with the river to rail and everything that was thought, you know, kind of through that process. So if we were to expand, yeah, we'd probably want to have some, some type of other name to it. River to rail and everywhere. <laughs> river to rail plus plus. Part, part do. <laughs> river to rail 2.0. Yes, please, James. So I'm hearing that uh, um, for sure, potentially South Six there, as well as you know, do we do we tie it into kind of what we have going on with the um, grant program to include you know what we have there? Um, seems like some things still have to be worked out, so maybe this is brought back to the next EDA meeting. Um, could provide a new nap, uh, map and then um, you know potentially some other uh, name to the program as well. So. You know, based on that, I don't think we're quite ready to bring to city council. So maybe bring this back to the next EDA meeting. Yeah, please. Yeah, and when you bring it back, I know you can't predict the future, and I'm not asking you to, but I am asking you to project potential costs or lack lack of revenue for the options we have. Mm -hmm. Yep, I can certainly do that. All right, very good. Anybody else? All right, do you have feel like you have direction on that, James? I do. Yeah. All right, very good. So no motion today, it's not going to city council. All right, we're gonna move on to, um, let's see, item B, this is the review of our EDA measurables and activities, James. Yes, thank you, Mr. President. Uh, so uh, staff pre uh, presented a report here that uh, lists the activities as well as the measurables. Won't go through every activity, but can certainly answer any questions. Just like to highlight some of the measurables from this last year. Uh, so BR and E interviews conducted. Blade Deck conducted a total of 46 businesses and 12 surveys were completed. Uh, the EDA and city staff toured three businesses. Uh, business owner social events. The DDBC hosted four business uh, owner social events uh, with Within the River to Rails District, um, the building department issued 80 permits with a total construction value of $3,533,900 uh, with 31,786 in permit fees waived. Uh, I do have um, confirmation here of what we've you, uh, totally forgiven within the River to Rails District as Council Member Bevins had asked here. Um, so uh, since the uh, program began in 2019, there's been a total of 403 permits that have been waived um, with a total of $170,395 um, of permit fees waived um, with a construction value of $10 million. So just some information about the total River to Rails program there. Um, with the Dean Main Street uh, projects awarded. Uh, this is kind of at the very end of 2022, uh, but the EDA awarded uh, $765,600 uh, to a total of 33 projects in the River to Rails Corridor District. Uh, certainly a successful program there. Um, Staff also did list uh, what Visit Brainerd has allocated this past year um, for the different campaigns um, for entrepreneurs, developers, as well as some of the um, shopping campaigns. Uh, the EDA did uh, recommend or allow staff to uh, partnership with the uh, Brainerd HRA to remove one blighted structure in town that had significant fire damage. Uh, uh, this past year, SHC has created two concept plans for underutilized industrial park and city-owned um, property on the Wright Street development. Uh, also, this isn't maybe directed uh, or directly tied to the EDA, but uh, within the city of Brainerd, 14 single-family homes and one fourplex, fourplex was created. Um, and then kind of last, uh, child care. 
uh, created that was directly resulted, I guess, from the Deed Main Street grant was the Brainerd YMCA, where 24 infant and 42 toddler spaces were created, um, as well as Teeny Bubbles, where 47 child care spaces were created. Uh, with that, I can answer any questions um, on any of the other activities. Yep. Two questions. Teeny Bubbles, is that open? It still is open. They're going through the appeal process at this point. What appeal process? Um, they, they, I know they had some licensing issues and it was in the paper. Um, so I believe they were going to uh, deny their license, but they still are going through the appeal process, which takes a number of months. Um, so pending the appeal process, they're still allowed to be open. Okay, so there is 47 spots on Laurel Street right now? There is still. Development on, on some of these other properties, and maybe John can discuss that as well. But I think that was probably one of the uh, big things that was kind of scaring um, contractors away from, from this past year is the interest rates. Thank you. Anybody else? All right. Thanks for the update. Uh, all right, we're done. We're going to move on to our uh, staff reports. Tyler, you want, do you have anything? No, I've talked enough today. Okay, very good. <laughs> Mr. Kramvik. Yeah, I'll just mention a few items here. Um, I uh, touched on the website, so BrainerdEDA.com. Uh, you can go to that. Uh, it's up and running. Uh, you can certainly provide any um, feedback back to uh, Mary on if there's anything else you'd like to see on that. Uh, still going to be a work in progress, but uh, we have property listings. We have uh, tell it talks about the EDA, talks about the Brainerd community. Uh, so um, got to take a look at it. Uh, looks very nice, and but certainly provide any other feedback that you guys may have on that. Um, also, uh, you should have received an email for potential tour upcoming tours here um, one of them to Giovanni's uh, Pizza so that's uh, I think they distribute to seven states in the area um, but they're kind of I guess made or manufactured in Brainerd and then sent out um, so I think that'd be a, a pretty fun tour to see you know how that's done and and uh, so uh, just respond to the doodle poll I think maybe by the end of the week here um, as well as Lakes Printing um, I used to work at a printing shop and it's kind of fascinating all the different types of uh, machines that uh, and and materials, I guess, that you can print on and all the different types of cutting materials as well. Um, so a couple upcoming tours there. And then uh, next planning commission meeting, uh, 805 Laurel Street Project has submitted their applications for conditional use permits as well as variances. Um, so they're looking to get that uh, completed uh, and then an application into um, the state of Minnesota for some grant funding for workforce housing by the end of April here. So that project continues to move along. That's everything. All right, very good. Thank you, James. Connie, you have anything? Mr. Broyles? Oh, thank you, Mr. President. So I think I've met most of you, maybe with the exception of a couple. So I'm, I guess I'm six weeks in place now about, and uh, still getting spun up on several issues, but I look forward to meeting all of you. And uh, I met Maria at the bakery, had a few snacks over there, so that's been great. So, But it's a pleasure that the, the th those that I've met, and I'm looking forward to meeting the, the last couple, and uh, look forward to a positive relationship with you guys going forward. So that's Very all good. I have. Thank you very much. Welcome aboard. Anybody else? All right, uh, Commissioner Comments. Anybody have anything? Mr. Bevins. Downtown Golf. Downtown Golf. Saturday, baby. 11 o'clock. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. You just go downtown and they'll go into any open business. They'll tell you what to do. All right, perfect. Anybody else? All right, with that, I'm looking for a motion to adjourn. Motion. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Post same sign. Very good. Thank you, everyone.